in this morning's Ask It Early. CBS News business and economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis is here to answer your questions on personal finance and the economy. Okay, so we'll just get right into it here. The first one is about paying off student loans, and it comes to us from Claire. My name is Claire, and my question is about student loans. I'm wondering if it's better to pay them off over time in increments, which would improve my credit score, or to pay them off as soon as possible. Well, it's not going to hurt your credit score to pay those loans off as soon as possible. But what you want to make sure of is that you're paying it off, but you're also contributing. If your company has a 401k program, you're also contributing to that and making sure that you're taking advantage of whatever matches the company 401k program has. Because at the same time you want to get rid of debt, you also want to set yourself up for the future. Both things work simultaneously together. Okay, so don't do just one or the other. You want to do both at the same yep. time. This next question came to us on our Facebook page from Penny. She writes, is it better to pay more on one card and pay minimums on the rest until one is paid off or temporarily not pay the other debts to get one paid off? Ooh, you never want to stop paying, right? Exactly. Penny Ann, what you want to do is pay down that highest interest rate debt first, but make sure that you are making the minimum payments on all of your debts because the problem is if you stop making those minimum payments, all of a sudden the interest rates go up across the board and you start incurring fees down the line and ultimately that what you perceive as lower interest rate debt all of a sudden becomes higher interest rate debt as a result of you not paying it off on time. And it also doesn't help your credit. If you actually don't pay those bills, that will show up and lower your credit score. It absolutely will. Great point, Erica. Okay. Uh, our last question comes from Julia. Here we go. What would happen if some of the European countries go back to their original currency? And how would that affect the United States? First off, this would be a logistical nightmare because all of a sudden you have all of these countries changing currencies, places like Greece, Italy, Spain. These are the names that have been coming up recently as a result of the crisis taking place in Europe. What's the impact here on the United States? Well, we've already seen some of it. The markets here in the United States are living in fear of what could happen down the line in Europe. So you're seeing that already in your 401k, in your pensions, uh, in any of your retirement savings. But in addition to that, the companies that are based here in the United States States, big multinational corporations, they get loans from Europe. And if there are more problems down the road with the euro, the accessibility to those loans is mm -hmm. going to be hindered. Sometimes those loans create jobs. Sometimes those loans build businesses. So even if it is sort of a nightmare right now in Europe, which is what we're seeing, it's better to at least stick with the euro across Europe than try to go back to individual currencies. Okay, well, there's, you're going to get different answers on this okay. one, Erica. There are people who say, take your lumps now, take the reality out of the situation. There's all of these different European countries uh, that are dealing with their own problems so we have to get through those problems and maybe a way to get through them is to take some of them off at least temporarily off the euro but ultimately there will be if that happens near-term pain in the markets and also potentially in lending nobody wants more pain right no now, right? it could be better for europeans <laughs> for americans rather traveling to europe but i but mean that's, that's really not the decision exactly yeah right. no rebecca thanks, thanks as always